Welcome to CMMS Radio, a podcast and general resource for all things CMMS, computerized maintenance management software, from selection to implementation to help you make better choices and have a successful CMMS journey. We'll bring in experts along the way to help us learn more about CMMS, facilities operations, and much more. If you need help with the CMMS project, send a message at cmmsradio.com using the What's On Your Mind link. Suggest a topic, share your CMMS story, or ask questions. All right, we are at Reliable Plant, 26th anniversary of this event. This is William Sloan. You might remember him. He was on CMMS Radio. I thought I'd stop by the Iridicio booth and just say hello and ask him, William, what is your favorite thing about Reliable Plant this year so far? So far, it's meeting all the new people. This is my first time at Reliable Plant. It's been an enjoyable experience. Greg, I've gotten to meet a lot of people that I've never met before. So networking is always great. It's always great to learn from others. And I've seen a lot of new stuff here that I've never seen before. So it's been really great so far with the experience. Yeah, I think it's a great conference because we're talking about maintenance people. They get it. They want to help one another, collaborate. And what was cool for me is we finally got to meet. That's right. Finally got to meet Greg in person. That's right. Yeah, Did a podcast with you already. Looking forward to doing another one. Yeah. But it's really good to connect and uh, good what you do, learning from others, having people on your episodes, and just uh, learning all things maintenance reliability along with you know CMS. You mind introducing me to your teammate? Oh uh, yeah, this is my teammate Katie. She's our uh, works in our sales department. Greg. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Thank. You. I'm good. I'm good. So I want to just real quick have you explain to everyone what your role here is at Iriducio. I've referred to you in the past as a dynamo. dynamo. You kind of do a lot of things. Right. You never seem to run out of energy. But if you could just explain to people what you do, yeah, that would be um, appreciated. So I am the sales executive, and I go to all of the conferences, all of the events, uh, I like to chat with everybody, figure out what their needs are, their pain points, and any way that we can help them and just really get to know them as a person and their company as well. Awesome. Now, even though we're just on like day one, one and a half, what is your favorite part of the conference this year so far? So, so far my favorite part is, well, like William said, meeting new people, but for me it's connecting with the same people that I've already previously spoken to. and. Uh, hearing about where they are now in their journey compared to where they were last year. Awesome. Well, I thank you both for these sound bites. I love doing these booth visits, and I'm always keeping an eye on what you're doing online. So everyone, Iridicio, hook up with William, hook up with Katie. They're here to help you, and we'll see you at Reliable Plant next year. Same place, great venue. Mm -hmm. Reacting to it. In fact, she's overwhelmed when she sees it. Think about that, all right? So from that perspective, we've got to make sure that when we're communicating to the organization, they may not all be engineers. They may not all be maintenance folks. They may not be concrete sequential. And we've got to think about how we're going to address that going forward. All right, next, leveraging success stories and case studies, okay? Likely, there are examples in your industry of success with reliability, success with RCA, success with RCM, all right, and any of the other acronyms I spewed a few minutes ago, because arguably they all work, all right? But you need to be able to show that, and early on, because you don't have a pilot area, which we'll talk about in a minute, but because you don't have a pilot area yet, you've got to use the success stories of others to convey what good looks like and where you could go. How many of you have success stories from other sites that you can use? Good, good. If you don't, we likely do. Every one of our students that go through our blended learning process presents a case study to the University of Tennessee and us. And we keep a lot of those. Now, some of them we can't share because of the the information that's in them, but a lot of them we can. So if you need to show the organization what good might look like, give us a call and let us give you a chance to uh, share some of those with you. All right? I know this isn't going to be the most favorable, but I'm going to say it anyway. You all have one of these. And it has a camera on it. All right? Don't be afraid to get away from a PowerPoint 
and the paper documents like the examples I put up there on the screen and shoot a video. Go see somebody who has been successful implementing planning and scheduling. Take a video of them talking about it. Let them tell you how it feels for your emotional folks. Let them tell you how much money they save for your logical folks and let them tell you how it got them promoted up in the organization for your last group our politicals all right so you can do a lot with this in fact i shoot some video regularly on here edit on here and post from here it never goes to anybody else and it works right we can do that all right next Engage stakeholders through workshops and seminars, also known as the pizza lunch. All right? Bribe them, just like I'm bribing you guys with these coins, all right, with these chips. Bribe them to come to the session and listen. Bribe them to watch the video you just created for the previous slide, right? Bribe them to come hear you talk about these coaching models that you've been building to help them understand why we should do more corrective maintenance and less preventive. Some of you are like, what? All right. So half day a leadership boot camps, webinars, lunch and learns. All right. If you've got a consulting partner you work with, they are probably they would probably be willing to do a little short lunch and learn for your executives. All right, to tell them what's possible. What does it look like? And what do you need from them to be successful? All right? Educate your leaders. I, I, they're leaders, and I don't want, this is not meant to be disparaging in any way, because I'm one of them, and I still get a lot of things wrong. All right? There's probably some of my staff in here, if they're shaking their head, they will not be getting privileged all right, but they still need to learn, and you can provide that information to them as we go forward. What I put up here is a leadership process for implementing reliability. It's something that I developed over the last few months, and the idea behind it is if you use this concrete sequentials, if you use this as a checklist and go through it, I promise it will increase your chances of success with the implementation, and I will prove it to you in a minute. Yeah, All right? Some of the things you see, mission and vision. Where do we go and how do we get there? A charter. The charter tells me where the boundaries are. All right? A master plan. Incredibly important because it breaks it down so that you don't get overwhelmed. Abstract randoms. All right, it allows us to see what's next without seeing everything at once. All right, and it continues on from master plan, it goes to guiding principles. What does really good look like? What does it look like on the other side? One of my favorite ones that show up in a lot of guiding principles is no, no ticky, no worky. All right. If you don't put in a work request or a work order, we are not going to do maintenance. That's an example of conveying what this thing looks like. Now, am I suggesting you have to do that? No, but if that's what your vision is, if that's where you want to go, then you need to have guiding principles so people can see what good looks like. All right? From there, we have a risk analysis. Can't oversell the risk analysis. If you don't do a risk analysis, you are in essence setting yourself up to be reactive when something goes wrong. Wait a minute. This whole thing is about the journey from reactive to proactive. So if I'm modeling reactive behavior in how I implement proactive results, is that going to sell it to the organization? Okay. All right. I'm going to do this. It's after lunch. I am going to play Sean Says. That's right. I always play Sean Says this week. So y'all stand up, and we're going to play a little Sean Says, please. All right? <laughs>
So I'll get up here real nice and high where you guys can all see me. All right, so Sean says that we need, in this organization, to stand on one foot without falling. Now, Sean says we don't do that too long because that would be a report. Okay, All right, on. so Sean says go ahead and put that foot back down. Get nice and stable. Sean says let's go ahead and make the okay symbol. It's the United States. This is legal. We can do this. There are certain countries I highly do not recommend this. All right, but Sean says make the OK symbol, and Sean says to take that OK symbol and put it right down on your chin for me. All right, put your OK symbol on your chin. All right, so what you're doing right now, a lot of you, is explaining to me you don't know what a chin is. Where is your hand? Where is your hand, y'all? Now look at you, someone trying to be slick, sliding down there. Do the slide. All right, y'all can have a seat. But this is a perfect example of where we didn't do a risk analysis. We didn't know what was going to go wrong, so we reacted and actually showed the very behavior we were trying to get rid of. Because people see what you do, not what you say. And we just proved it in here. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So in my leadership process, the next box, you leave risk behind. Risk is where you sit there, you tell them you're going to provide that pizza lunch that you saw a few minutes ago, and then mysteriously it doesn't show up. You want them grumpy. You want them grouchy. All right, keep the Snickers bars out of there. This is the one time when you want these folks to complain loud and proud. Because you want to know every risk to this implementation as we go forward now so that I don't have to figure it out later. And you'll know you did it well if somebody accuses you of having a crystal ball in the future. All right, and I have literally had folks say that. Because that leadership team sat around and thought about all the things that were likely going to go wrong. And then they built those into the next document, which is the communication plan. Now, in that communication plan, this is another one of the things that we engineers struggle with. We don't necessarily want to communicate. And even when we do, we don't communicate enough. One study I saw a few years ago said it takes um, anywhere from 7 to 21 times to communicate a large message, a major message to the organization. <laughs> 7 to 21. All right? So you've got to realize that you do actually need to take those risks, figure out how you're going to communicate those risks and address those risks going out to the organization, and then do it multiple times through multiple meetings. I'll show you an example of that here in just a minute. Communication documents. These uh, coaching cards that I passed out around the room are one type of a communication document that you can use. But there are many. They could be videos. They could be funny cartoons. We've had a lot of those that, are, that really do well with communicating certain points out to the organization. But somebody's got to create those documents. Then the leadership team has got to review the business processes. Now, the reason that's all they do here is because typically, and I'll show you this again in a second, the focus teams, the people who are down building the business processes, are bringing them to the leadership team. Okay? If you do not have focus teams, then somebody in your organization has to do that too. The next one, taking success stories and communicating them. And that's a lot of what this is about. But a lot of times, when I ask people to take success stories out to the organization, I don't get exactly what I'm looking for. Or they're not comfortable with sharing the information. We've got to talk about the little successes to get the big successes. All right? So you want to make sure as you go forward that you are grabbing success stories everywhere you can, even the little ones where Bob finally used a kid from the kidding area. <clears throat> All right? Or Tom finally put closing comments on the word order. All right, those are the kind of things that we can... Did you find this episode helpful? Please send us some feedback, suggest a topic, or ask a question. Reach out to CMMS Radio if you need a co-pilot on your CMMS project. Visit cmmsradio.com and use the What's On Your Mind link. Thank you for tuning in to CMMS Radio, your resource for all things CMMS from selection 
to implementation to help you make better choices, learn from industry experts, and have a successful CMMS journey.